All right. Uh, let's talk about how the Pokemon company is uh, back at it again. Nintendo yeah. is back at it again. With well, some it's specifically games. the Pokemon company. According to a YouTuber, the Pokemon company requested that YouTube remove a seven-year-old video showcasing modded Pokemon monsters in a Call of Duty Zombies match. On March 19th, as first spotted by IGN, Noah J456, a popular Call of Duty content creator who has over 5 million subscribers on YouTube, Yes. What the f are they on about? As first spotted by IGN. It's a tweet by the guy. <laughs> Why are we crediting IGN for finding a tweet? Maybe they were the first person to find the tweet. I don't know. I didn't he's write the got article. A, he's, people follow him. He's got a million followers. <laughs> and, uh, th I hate, I hate like the, the, what do you call, what do you call it? They just... They, they just fucking, like, steal articles from each other. Right. Hate that. Kind of like what we're doing now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except we don't credit them. <laughs> no, I'm going to read Noah J's tweet. Read Noah J's tweet. He says, uh, warning to all content creators, if your videos feature any sort of modded Pokemon content, I would delete slash unlist it ASAP. Just got a manual strike for a video I made seven years ago. Featuring Pokemon modded into Call of Duty Zombies. Two more strikes and my channel gets deleted. So it's a seven-year-old video. Yes. Uh, where literally just Pokemon are modded into Call of Duty yeah. Zombies. And here's a screenshot of him about to shoot a Pikachu in the face. Yeah. Um, so I got text messages about this asking if I had any uh, videos with modded Pokemon stuff. Uh -huh. And I'm sure I do in some of my videos. Maybe there's like a ROM of like a yeah. modded Pokemon game or something, but I don't have like explicitly like videos of gameplay. Uh -huh. This video's title is a new Pokemon zombie. So it's like the main focus of the video is that it's, uh -huh. a, it's a Pokemon mod. Um, and the big problem here is that it's a seven year old video and it's a strike. So that means he's, if he gets striked, Two more times his video, his yeah. channel gets just completely deleted. Uh, so that's why strikes are so terrible for mm -hmm. for YouTubers. Uh, famously, Point Crow got uh, they Nintendo gave him two strikes. They did it in a weird way where they kind of forced him to be like on probation on YouTube, so he yeah. couldn't live stream for a while and stuff and stuff like that. They like. They like fucked him to like as much as they could without getting his channel deleted. Right. I think there needs to be something between a copyright claim and a copyright strike. Yeah. His copyright claim is the video stays up, but the copyright holder just takes all of the money, takes right. all the revenue. Or now they have like a little rev share situation. Mm -hmm. uh, copyright strike is the video gets deleted. There needs to be something where the video gets deleted and you don't have your channel in jeopardy. Because right. it's a fucking seven-year-old video. Yeah. There's no reason to put the whole channel in jeopardy. This whole system exists because there are people who upload whole movies. Yeah. And there are a lot of people who upload whole mm -hmm. movies, whole songs, whole TV shows, and try to claim all the revenue from it. So it's understandable why a system like this exists, but... Clearly, this guy is not here to upload a whole Pokemon episode, right. you know? Like, yeah. So it, it's modded content. It's not even a Pokemon game. It's a it's an Activision game. Yeah. Um, but the fact that there are Pokemon in it is what's causing the the consternation. <laughs> yeah. So there, I don't like the way the system is working in this way. There, yeah. there needs to be a different route for a company like the Pokemon company to go if they want their content taken down that is not the same as if somebody uploaded a whole Pokemon right. episode. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I mean, look, there's nothing stopping companies like the Pokemon company from just taking any video down that even mentions Pokemon. Right. There's nothing stopping them at all. So, uh, you all right? I just noticed a scr uh, scratch on this. Let me see. Let me see your scratch. Any right brand there. new, very expensive thing. It, it refurbished. Let's not forget. Refurbished. That looks like a... 
Someone got caught in it. Yeah. It was like a like dust. Yeah. No problem. See, I'm I fix things. Yeah, oh, there you Not go. Your Steam Deck. <laughs> Nobody can fix that. See, if it was a Microsoft system, if it just ran Xbox <laughs> OS, it would be fine. Griffinix says, can't they just DMCA the videos? No. Because that uh, would be a... Uh, like a... They would just claim the money from the video. Like yeah. th That wouldn't take the video down. Uh, one creator, Toasted Chews, blames himself and his Power World X Pokemon mod video for causing the company to start cracking down. In January of this year, Toasted Chews uploaded a teaser of a mod that added Pokemon uh, to Power World, a survival game commonly referred to as Pokemon with guns. That video was soon taken down via a DMCA claim from Nintendo and the Pokemon Company. Now some creators are worried that Nintendo and the Pokemon Company are going scorched earth and will begin nuking even decades old videos. Um, from the internet and possibly cause some channels to be completely shut down. Yeah, I'm still waiting for the Power World lawsuit. Yeah. That's, I think, is still 100% happening. But yeah, Pokemon, we talked about it on the show. I think there was a Pokemon mod for Power World because, of course, there was. Yeah. And that got uh, swiftly deleted. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're the cause of it, but I mean, the Pokemon Company uh, and Nintendo. They're on YouTube. They're they're they got yeah. their eyes open. They're they're watching everything. They have to weigh whether or not it is important for the brand. Like like, is this content negatively affecting our brand? And if we take it down, how much bad PR are we gonna get? Oh, I don't think they care about bad PR at all. Well. I think that they're walking a line. Mm -hmm. uh, they overstep more than most people. But if they start taking down like reviews, like yeah. they're gonna, everyone's gonna be mad. Yeah, you know, like that would be like a gross overstep. Um, so I don't know. I I mean, my content is in a, uh, it's always in jeopardy because right. like I I don't even really show straight up gameplay. Uh, gameplay can get DMCA or copyright right. struck all the time, but I don't really do that. I show like off-camera stuff, but even that is still liable to the same sort of yeah. copyright. Um, but I do show ROMs, and that's yeah. of course uh, we already know that's a legal gray area, mm -hmm. or just straight up illegal sometimes. <laughs> and I have shown in in recent videos Pokemon ROM hacks. I got mm -hmm. a, an R four that I got came with Pokemon ROM hacks on it. Uh, so. Any minute now, you know they yeah. could they could slam the 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 ban hammer. And the way that they'll do it is they'll take down a lot of them. They'll take down as many as they can before the channel gets deleted, or they'll just take them all down and the whole channel will get mm -hmm. deleted. Then I'll have to fight with a YouTube representative. Uh, so it's terrible out here, guys. Hope your job's yeah. safe. Anyway, uh, where are we at? Uh, no new notification. Power World has 600 viewers at the moment. It's pretty much dead. I mean, it exploded and made millions and millions of dollars, and there was probably only like five people working on it. So uh, they're probably fine. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, they better have some of that money in the bank for when they get yeah a, a swift boot. Uh, but that's not the only Pokemon DMCA. Oh, it's happened. not, huh? No. Uh, Pokemon fan game repository taken down uh, by DMCA. Relic Castle featured hundreds of fan-made Pokemon games. A Pokemon website, which hosted links to fan-made Pokemon games, has been official has been taken offline. Relic Castle, which was set up in 2014, consisted of a forum dedicated to the playing and creating of Pokemon fan games, as well as a directory providing access to hundreds of fan-made games. Uh, now, however, the site has been taken offline with its owner blaming a reported DMCA takedown notice as the reason. Dear Pokemon fam game community, the message posted on the site's Twitter account reads, um, it is with heavy heart that I announce that Relic Castle um, has been taken down following a DMCA takedown notice. Uh, Relic Castle has always been a non-profit, ad-free, tight-knit community, and we pride ourselves in what Ooh. we have achieved. Members have felt at home, made friends, and even careers with us. Um, it is with deep regret that we have to inform you that 
uh, the forum part of this community, which has turned 10 years old this year, has, has come to an end. With over 20,000 members and 65,000 posts, Relic Castle is home to many of us. The Discord server is not going anywhere, and the site is still visible as an archive using the Wayback Machine. Thank you for being with us uh, this last decade, and thank you for making Relic Castle as awesome and life-changing as it has been for some of us. You guys can't hear the alerts, right? I'm just realizing I don't mute them anymore. <laughs> that, that doesn't come up, right? That would uh, be very embarrassing. Yeah, It's not clear who issued the DMCA takedown notice or a specific reason uh, it gave... Uh, and whether it included reasons beyond simply using Pokemon IP. Uh, earlier this month, uh, chief lawyer for the Pokemon company said in an interview that fan projects are more likely to get taken down if they get press coverage and start making money. Uh, we talked about that last week. So one thing I find interesting is they say that they didn't make any money. Yeah. But uh, they even shared careers. I so. think that was... Um, I think that was more like, you know, started careers like in the gaming industry. Yeah. yeah. So I have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully they didn't make any money. Right. Uh, they said in this, in this statement that they weren't making any money. So that's good. Uh, I want to know how, if any, is anybody in the chat familiar with Relic Castle, the website? Does it run like Super Mario World Central? That's a, this is a website. Uh, that is for Mario ROM hacks. And the way this works is if you find a ROM hack, like I found one here that I want to try called We Like It Here. It's a newer ROM hack. I saw Pooh Bear was playing it. Uh, the way this works is you download a file and you have to use this extension to take the file and patch your, your Super Mario World ROM. So the game doesn't actually have any Super Mario World content. I mean, the, the, the website doesn't have any Super Mario World content on it. Mm -hmm. It's just patching the ROM that you already got somewhere else. Right. I'm hoping that's how Relic Castle ran. Actually, I'm hoping that's not how Relic Castle right. ran because that would make sense why they would get a DMCA because they're distributing right. copyrighted content. I... The way it should work is that it patches the game that you mm -hmm. already have so that everything can run in a legal capacity. Right. It provides you the full ROM complete and ready to go. Good. They should have been DMCA. <laughs> <laughs> the DMCA makes a lot of sense now. Right. Somebody's got to make a patcher, a ROM patcher. That That is so much... I mean, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but the ROM patcher is easy to use. And it makes it so that everything's above board. Right. I know there was a Pokemon ROM hack archive site, but I only went there once as Griffin X. Uh, yeah. Uh, they, I mean, a lot of this stuff's going to be on archive.org anyway. Yeah. Archive.org, I think, had some trouble recently, but I think they're fine. Yeah, I, I think they're okay. I think they yeah. were like, people were uh, thinking they were going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, guys, if you're going to have a fucking uh, ROM hack website, you got to have a patcher. You got to, if you're going to hack a ROM, create a patcher of some sort. I'm trying to look up because I remember there was, um, in 2016, there was uh, Pokemon Uranium, yeah. which is a fan game. It was made in RPG Maker. Uh, and that got taken down by Nintendo. Um, after it had gotten like one and a half million downloads. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to see how like how that was distributed, if that was Well, that's a whole Pokemon game made in a different engine. Right. If they're they probably had a Patreon or something. Okay. Um same thing with like another Metroid 2 remake. Yeah. Like that's just <clears throat> straight up using the company's IP to to promote your game. well there was that one i forgot who said it but they said if nintendo is the nintendo will go after you if they're planning on if you're making a fan game that is infringing on a game that they either have in development or they like continue to make money on like another metroid prime another metroid 2 remake was shut down because they were working on their own samus returns remake yeah well, last year, uh, last week, we talked about a lawyer for the Pokemon yes. company saying why Pokemon company would come after your fan mm -hmm. game, and here we're seeing it put into put into practice. Yeah. Um, and he pre pretty much says, "Just don't make money off of it. If you yeah. don't make money off of it, we don't care." 
But in this case, they're literally distributing games that exist yeah. that are modified to some extent. Um, there is not much difference between having a fully made game in a fully different engine like Pokemon Uranium yeah. uh, that's just using the Pokemon IP and having a ROM hack that will patch the ROM that you already have. There's not uh -huh. much difference there. The only big difference that I can see is that Having a ROM that requires, or having a, a patch for a ROM that already exists means that you had to have acquired the game already. Mm -hmm. And that game needs to, you know, come from Nintendo. Quotes. Yeah. Uh, because you could just fucking download it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's super easy to get Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games yeah. uh, ripped to yourself. There's so many ways to do it, and it's so easy to do it. <sighs> um, so that's something that I think is precious and needs to be protected. Yeah. Being able to rip your own ROM and patch it legally. Absolutely. Um, so I, I, I want to pursue, I want everybody as a community to pursue those angles. <laughs> For the love of God.